And we're back with some more of this baby mini base madness. Now, down here, we're uh, slowly but surely draining out all the debris we managed to pick up and cooling it down to, well, a semi reasonable temperature. What are we looking at here? This is uh, run to Wolframite now. The Wolframite's coming out at about, well, I set it to 190 degrees, I believe, here. What was it set at? 190. So it comes out at 190, then it hits our sort of cooling block here that's been cooled by the counter flow of the steam turbine, wastewater, whatever. But that all results in the whole thing coming out about 100, 100 degrees or so. It's still a little bit warm, but our cooling loop is very close by. I've added a few more radiant tiles here, and it's managed to keep the temperature here not horrible. Yeah, it's kind of okay. And uh, eventually all of that hot steel, wolframite, and tungsten will, will cool down. Once we've gone through, though, all the wolframite here, we're slowly running out of materials. We'll go to the diamond, and once the diamond runs out, we'll start doing igneous rock and switching over to magma. This should hopefully provide us with all our power needs. However, we've hit that mm, that weird point in the game that a lot of people sort of... Th this is where a lot of people fall out of this game. It's... We have... Plenty of oxygen. We've got the, all this water is our oxygen supply. We've got plenty of food because we can make food out of the bristle blossoms, which also comes from our water supply, which is infinite. And we've got all of this power coming from down here, and that's that's a lot of power. That's going to last us hundreds, if not thousands of cycles. Well, hundreds at least. So at this point, you're like, well, what's the point of even going to space? We've got everything we need. Well, we don't have everything. Uh, for one thing, our skill tree is looking pretty bare bones. Some of the people are starting to get a bit maxed out. Ignore the people who are at 20 morale. That's because they just got some barbecue. Uh, the barbecue is not going to last forever, unfortunately. So our choices are we need to upgrade our morale so we can support more, mm, more jobs on our pawns, as well as that we're going to need astronauts later when we go for space. We need to rip out everything that's in here because this is where the rocket is going to go. We can't put in the rocket here because I am not ripping out my power system. I just put that in. The power system is going to stay until the magma is gone. So we're going to need some sort of rocketry system here, but it's going to be small because we can't really... Well, maybe we can push this out of the way. Some smart building? We might be able to do that. Well, that means we need a complete remodel of the base. So we need a different food to upgrade morale, and we need a complete remodel of this side of the base to make space for a rocket fitting in here. So food-wise, the obvious choice is shovels. We are going to get shovels, and we are going to farm them... Well, we're going to starvation ranch them. Doing the math on it, I think you need about 1.55 shovels if you're starvation ranching them to feed a duplicate. So we're going to run about 20 shovels that we starvation ranch, and that should allow us to support about 12 dupes, but we probably won't go that high. We'll probably go up to about 10 dupes. But it's always nice to have a little bit of overhead. I'm thinking we will install our new starvation ranch over here. Uh, that will mean we'll need to put in a ranch somewhere else to actually expand the numbers. You know what? We'll just start a quick ranch here, I think. Oh, first we're going to have to empty out these liquid tanks. They are taking up space. So I think because we have so much cooling going on... Where's that water at? 14C? Yeah, we have enough cooling and we can handle having some of these tanks escape a bit of heat. We are well past that... Mm. One second. Thank God for the pliers mod. Ah, there we go. Uh, so that will dump all the water into these tanks and we can rip out this whole section. That stuff is 70C water. But we have... What's the water temperature I set it to? Ah, 10 degrees. I've set this down to 10 degrees because you know what? Why not? We've got the power now. We're going to chill down this entire map to about 10C. If we do that, it might actually uh, kill off some of the germs we have floating around. No, no they've gotten better. Ish. Sort of ish. Before we starvation ranch the shovels, though, first we need to get one shovel and start feeding them and breeding up a whole bunch of shovels out of them. So we'll have to make a single shovel ranch to support one shovel, and then we're going to whisk all the eggs out of there and feed them to our second ranch, which will be a starvation one. Now that means we're going to need a lot of regular to feed them, because shovels eat a lot of regular. I think it's 1,400 kilos a day or something? How much? Uh, doesn't actually tell me here, does it? Ah, here we go. 4,000... 4 4.8 tons of regolith a day. So we're going to need a lot of regolith to keep them going. And it's going to take six cycles before they drop an egg, and we've got to do that 20 times, so... Oh, 120 cycles? Okay, they only live for 100. We'll, we'll, we'll sort this out, but we are going to need a lot of regolith to do it, and I'm going to start storing it over here. It's actually nice to see all of that being pristine and clean again. Okay, uh, I think... Mm, I think first up, though, we've got to make a ranch for these to allow us to breed them. I'm thinking it's got to be in a vacuum because we're going to be dumping in an awful lot of regolith in there, aren't we? The overall game plan is going to be cram everything in on this side of the base, for now. Build our rocket silo here and make sure we, we, we do this area right. We want to make sure everything we do over here after we've cleared it out is permanent. Then once we've done this side, we can squish everything into the middle and then make this side permanent. Yeah, there's just not enough space to do anything. I think someone in the comments said, uh, what was it? 
Ah, Eli Kirkwood. In my last playthrough, my water storage was bigger than this entire map before I got into space. You know, I think I've had petroleum storage tanks that were bigger than this entire base. <laughs> when you think of it that way, yeah, I really do enjoy this mod just for the insanity it causes. Anyway, uh, enough faffing about. Time to get a time to get started at least on our little starvation ranch. This is going to be our entire food source from now on. Well, we have to fill it first. What we're going to do is breed up 20 shovels and dump their eggs in here. And then they will get groomed in here. They will lay one egg before they run out of calories. Critters start with a set amount of calories to begin with, so their calorie counter won't go down for a while. So they'll have enough calories to lay one egg, then they'll start starving to death, and then they'll turn into uh, meat. At which point, well, they'll have already laid their replacement egg, which will then hatch and the cycle will repeat itself again and again and again. So if we cram 20 shovels in there, we'll be able to support 12 duplicates on nothing but barbecue on something this size. In fact, once the 20 eggs are in there, what we can do is... Well, move this door one step to the right, and yeah, that would be a much smaller ranch. We can, oh, or we could also leave some space by taking the top off there and putting in an auto sweeper so that we can sweep the meat out automatically. Though, I'm not sure about that. For the time being, I think we'll just uh, let our dupes do it manually. Okay, but we need somewhere to breed, breed them up, and our regolith is a little bit toasty. It gets 300 degrees over here. We might want to put it in a vacuum style area. So I'm thinking we're probably going to put our breeding ranch over here and then somehow transport the eggs across, probably using a stupidly long shipping rail. Uh, yeah, let me do some modifications here. Wait, wait, before we start that, we have new printables available. And we've got someone who's got a, I mean, they're not brilliant, but honestly, I haven't seen a good duplicate in a long time. So I think we're going to take them. Please welcome Moff Gideon to the, to the colony. Uh, hopefully the colony won't be too small for them. They should already have a mess table and we have eight beds. Eight beds. They will be fine. Now, time to expand this area over here and get ourselves some more... Mm, and start breeding ourselves up some more of these shovels. This is going to be our very compactified breeding up station. We'll stick about two or three shovels in here. Uh, yeah, two or three should be fine and that should allow us to breed them up quite rapidly. This auto sweeper here will whisk out any eggs, dump them onto this conveyor loader, that will send them across this wire and all the way over to there. Ooch. Yep, yeah, meters of sh showers started. Uh, we'll also dump a lot of regolith down here so that they have some uh, food to get. Not all of it, but, you know, 100 tons or so should be fine. That should allow us to start breeding. Oh, I'm going to have to delete that, aren't I? Yeah, we have to get some way of uh, wrangling them in here in the first place. All right, I've moved three of them in, deleted the animal drop-off. I did not make the animal drop-off out of iron ore and have it instantly start overheating. That would have been silly, of course I did not do that. Uh, but uh, for the time being, yeah, they're just going to breed up. One of them I think already dropped an egg, which is currently over here. <laughs> so they they breed, they should breed quite rapidly. Well, once we tame them up. How long is that going to take? A couple of cycles. We only have one groomer at the moment, but that's okay. This ranch is effectively offline. We don't need it anymore. We already have enough coal. We'll let those, uh, those hatches just die out or starve to death. We don't really care. At some point, they'll be gone, and we can start ripping up this farm here shortly, I'd say. How much food do we got? Oh, we got half a million calories. Enough for 72 cycles, if my calculator is telling me the truth. I think we can just dig all of these up then, can we? You know what? No. I'll leave them there. It costs us nothing to dump some polluted water in there. Anyway, well, with that set up, we still can, of course, remove that, but we can start getting all of this stuff out of the way in preparation for rocketry. So where are we going to squish everything? We need to also move the liquid tank. Hmm, I think there's going to be a lot of polluted water about to go into liquid storage tanks. And I have to figure out where are we going to cram those liquid storage tanks. Most likely over here. I'd rather not, but I think, yeah, we have to kind of dump everything over this side and live with it that way. Hmm. Let me have a big think. Well, my decision to leave the bristle blossoms there didn't last very long. Uh, time to remove a lot of them. We're going to dig the whole lot of them up. We're going to rip out this whole section. I also had to expand this ranch slightly. Uh, the reason being, it needs to be 12 tiles. Otherwise, it's not classified as a stables. Sorry, ranch stables. Uh, since it wasn't a stables, you had to expand it just a little bit so you could at least groom them. Uh, oh, no one can get out of there. Oops. Yeah, we can sort that pretty quickly. This whole place is too much of a mess. It's got to go. I've uh, moved some beds up here. Oh. Oh, damn it. We'll have to deconstruct that. Replace it with a regular tile. But yeah, this whole area has got to go. Even the water tank, the whole nine yards, everything. I'm going to pump the water out of there and dump it into the liquid storage tanks. Hopefully it'll kill off some of the just ludicrous amount of germs that are going on. Oh my god. No, no, it's actually making it worse. It's making it worse. The germs are, the germs are multiplying. <laughs> How? There's only, what, 
there's nine million food poisoning germs in here, and somehow the the the, the liquid tank reservoir is ending up with more germs in it than than it just pulled out. I don't know what whatever the rounding error is there. It's really fun. Plus my my dupes are getting nice and sick. I've tried to reduce the temperature over here so low that everything in here should start to die, but unfortunately I can't really get the chill to go through the refrigerators. But never mind, never mind. Soon we'll be on nothing but barbecue and everything will be golden. You know what? They're pretty good. Construct well, tidying and operating, meaning they can be a machinery and tidying. Mm. Let's see if we have enough space to be hiring someone else, shall we? Eh, you know what? Once we get in the new mess hall, I think we can totally take on another dupe. Uh, times like this is why you shouldn't get distracted. We have an entombed duplicate. Uh, we want to stop all sweep actions. We are going to make a bunch of high priority dig commands. <laughs> and we're going to try and dig them out without getting them entombed. Uh, again. Yeah, so someone's entombed over there. IG-11. Uh, this is... Yeah, all hands on deck, people. Oh, God. Oh, that's two of them entombed. Uh, more people. More people. Come on. Move it, move it, move it, move it. <laughs> the most we can have is two people digging at the same time. So, so long as we unentomb the last one that got entombed and we can get the other one out before they run out of oxygen. Probably possible. Oh, you're hungry. Really? That's your biggest concern right now is that you're hungry. Mm, mm. All right. Well, uh, let's, uh, let's hope we can make it there in time before they end up uh, suffocating. I think we got this. The meteor, st uh, meteor storm... Stopped at a good time. One second. Let's make sure that's a high priority all the way along. Yeah, I think we're going to be okay. Thank God that stopped and it did. Yeah, I think Baby Yoda's going to get there in time. Come on. Yes. Yes. Oh, man. That was just dumb. That should never have happened. Though, while we're up here, we might as well grab all of that regolith. I mean, you know, our shovels are going to go hungry. <laughs> hey, let's, uh... Oh, disable that building. I don't want anyone drinking water out of that. Especially since we don't have any water sources available. We've dumped all our water into these tanks to get them out of the way. We're going to make ourselves a nice little uh, dining area here. And then I think that will be semi-permanent. We have managed to free up a bunch of space here by getting rid of our... We're moving our dining hall a little bit over here. This place is going to become, well, semi-permanent. Until this rocket facility is finished here, this will all become pretty pretty permanent, let's just say. Uh, at the same time... What was it? Ah, yes. We were going to hire someone else. That was it. Uh, choose a blueprint. Yes, this one here, they're not the best, but hey, Diver's Lung is always a plus, and they've got operating and tiding and construction, which never hurts. So, say hello to the client. They can uh, join us now, and we do have enough tables and beds and everything for all of them. So I'll give them a quick skill check. What do you got? Uh, I think it's improved carrying all the way up to exosuit training for pretty much everyone. That's the sort of go-to. Uh, for the time being, though, everyone who can access these atmosphere, they've been, you know, I'm not allowing anyone to access the, the Atmos suits until they've at least get up to exosuit training. Having some slow people up here is just really, really dangerous, especially considering that the meter showers can come down at any point and make your life a living hell. Eh, what was I going to do? Ah, yes, we are going to move the bathrooms as well and maybe move the bedrooms as bedrooms down further. It's just that gas pressure up there is kind of low and occasionally my dupes have uh, problems breathing. I think we're going to fill this entire area up here with... Probably liquid storage tanks. We're going to need a lot of them to hold all we need. Oop, problem, problem. Power's going down. We ran out of diamond to drain the heat out of. We actually got an awful lot of heat out of this. I, I'm not sure how many cycles, but draining the heat out of all the debris that was down here really gave us an awful long, uh, a very long, the longevity of that, uh, of the material down there really helped us out. But uh, we're now going to add in the raw mineral and throw in the igneous rock as well, though there's not really that much of it. We are not moving the abyssalite. The abyssalite can stay there. That stuff just doesn't drop heat even in here. So I suppose it just stays around until we find a use for it. Hmm. At the same time, it's time to start dropping some magma in there. Now, I'm not going to automate this just yet, but I think there's things we can do with a few doors. It's just I want to sort of pull a little bit of magma out of here. If I delete any of these ladder segments, for example, they'll fall down here and then they'll melt and turn into magma. So I want to make sure that we're well below the 1800 mark all the way around here. And because of how viscous magma is, we could probably drain quite a bit of this before that happens. Now, where is everyone? Oh, enable auto bottle would be an idea. And Mando comes along because they have no fear of pouring boiling magma about the place. Okay, that kind of works. Yeah, there we go. Temperature's going back up and we have more igneous rock to add. And let me just do some playing around here. All right, I think we're finally starting to get to that temperature, which is just about perfect. Ooh, actually, that one's already overproduction, is it? 850. Mm, all right, that's enough of that. We'll make you sweep only for now. 
I think we'll put in just a little bit of basic automation here just to make sure that this doesn't get overfilled, though we will have to move the pitcher pump to do it. I was kind of hoping to drain this out a bit more, but we can, we can do a, a mass drain of that later. I think we'll just free up some space on this side. Hmm. Yeah, let's get this started. First thing we're going to do is move the pitcher pump over here so we have a little bit more room to work with. Then we're going to need to use some creative use of doors and this automation wire. Hmm. This is my very, very dumb idea. We're going to have this as a one-way door for returning and we'll see if this works actually. If we'd say you to go out and one to go in. What's the temperature here at? I will have one quick test run. Even if we overheat this a bit, it's not the end of the world. Uh, so yeah, let's get rid of the sweep only. If this is done right, this should go down through here. Come on, somebody. Someone's going to have to come in here at some point. Oh wait, I should probably read the instructions. That's for passing up. This is for passing down. All right, there we go. That should give someone the option to go through. If we've done this right, they'll go down to grab it. And then on the way back up, they'll go through the top door. Okay, perfect, perfect. Then all we have to do is just add a tiny smidge of automation. We have a, a temperature sensor in here. So all we'll do is we'll hook that up to the downward door. This way people can get in here. Well, people can't get in here while this door is locked by this. So if there's too much temperature, you know what? Let's finish it. All right. This should be fairly straightforward. If the temperature is below 180, duplicants, that door will open and duplicants will be able to get in. However, once that happens, they'll be able to go in here, they'll grab it from the pitcher pump, and they'll dump it into the bottle emptier. If while they're on their way back and forth, however, and the temperature in here goes too high and the door locks, well, they'll still be able to return through that door. That door still gives them the option. Oh, they're just bouncing back and forth. Let's see. Will that someone... No, no. Manda was almost about to come in here, and then they close the door on him. Yeah, this is going to be a bit of a time waster. Oh, god damn it. Just, just hurry up and get in here. What's the temperature at? 180? Uh, so they grab that, and then they return through there... Uh, perfect. Now someone else come in here. Come on, just do it now, bef just so that we can prove it's got a built-in safety feature. Come on. Yeah, it looks like we're not going to get to demonstrate the built-in safety feature. It's just going to be an annoyance. Uh, occasionally, dupes are going to come down here and run back and forth a bit. But that should allow us to, well, live, subside on this magma for a very, very, very long time. And molten glass, of course. We'll pour that in there when the time comes. What I'd like to do, though, is maybe put in a wall segment. Once we get this down a bit, we can put in a few wall segments here and then take all the magma that's on this side and pour it over the other side. It'll be some manual labor, but we can we can manage that. But at a later date, at a later date, we want to sort out all of this polluted water. We've got our hands on chlorine. Well, not technically chlorine. We got one ton of rust through the gateway, and that rust we can feed into a rusty oxidizer, and the rusty oxidizer will spit us out some oxygen and some chlorine. And that chlorine we can capture for decontamination purposes, which I wasn't going to bother doing, but... Yeah, due to the issues we've had in the past, I think I'm going to set up just a little bit of a decontamination center. So I got a little distracted. I was going to do the polluted water, but I decided I'm going to do food first. Uh, reason being, well, because of all the germs that went around, some of my food is well, a little contaminated with food poisoning, and everyone keeps getting food poisoning. It's not crippling, it's just really annoying. So what I'm going to do is we're going to set ourselves up a little storage area here with some chlorine, and we're going to use that chlorine chlorinated area to um, yeah, store our food. How exactly we're going to do it? I think, oh, you know what? We should replace that tile there. What we're going to do is use a little blob of crude oil right here. And that blob of crude oil is what's going to prevent any gas from getting in there. And we're going to fill that area with a little, little bit of chlorine. Just a tiny bit. All right. How much crude oil do we want in here? That, that's, that's way too much crude oil. You know what? That's, that's way, way, way too much crude oil. We've got plenty of crude oil right there. And then we can delete the side here. Now all the excess crude oil should flow off the edge. And once that's all flown off, we can put that in there. It should seal that in, and then we can deconstruct that tile. Oh, and furniture-wise, water cooler, put that back in place. So with that tile deleted, and that liquid right there to prevent any gases from flowing, and uh, that crude oil... Oh, oop, maybe lock that up too. <laughs> that crude oil will keep that whole place a vacuum. And so long as our dupes only stand up here and don't stand inside it, they shouldn't be able to break the seal. Now all we need to do is get some chlorine in there. Just a teeny tiny bit of chlorine. Uh, I'm thinking we're going to need some sort of storage area down here. Oh, but first, first I want to go get a little bit more regolith. Ah, uh, more regolith. All that delicious regolith for our shovel farms. Uh, how many eggs we got? Only four? Okay, it'll take a while, it'll take a while. Oh, um, mm, 
down here, I've got an idea about how to reduce the inefficiency of this. Uh, I was just thinking if we just grab an automation gate and we can stick it in a filter gate on this. Filter gate only lets the green signal through if it receives it for longer than the selected amount of time. So if we stick one right about there, and ooh, let's break that. And what happens is if we receive the signal for, say, 10 seconds, then we allow it through. That just makes sure that this is definitely, it just stops this flim flamming back and forth between on and off. Yeah, we'll just make that 10 seconds. Boom. And that should be problem solved. That should make that much easier to work with. Now, over here, we're going to, yes, we're going to harvest some chlorine from a rust deoxidizer. Uh, yeah, that's going to be interesting. I just want to scrape out all of the gas that comes out of this, every single bit of it, and then filter all the chlorine into something, say... Ooh, I got an idea. Yeah, we'll stick in a gas reservoir right there. We'll store all our chlorine that we get from this in it. And we'll just dump the oxygen into the surrounding environment, and we'll move all our bedrooms from the top floor down to here. Just because the oxygen pressure, or the gas pressure down here, is, is much better. They're, they're having too much troubles up there, plus I want to renovate that for later. The uh, plan should be fairly straightforward. We just... Well, I'm going to seal this in, put in a door, and then once everything is sealed up, we'll turn it on. Hopefully, has it been stocked up with salt yet? Oh, come on. Someone put some salt in there at some point. Uh, I suppose it doesn't have power, so they're not going to bother. I'll uh, disable the building, maybe, then hook up the power. I just want to... I don't want this on until the doors get closed. And by doors, I mean we're going to put in an actual mechanized airlock right there. Seal this off, and then we're going to suck out all the gas out of here. Ah! Well, I might want to delete that right there so that people can fill in that little gas towel. Come on. Right, I think this person here, Grief, is ca passing off the rust. Come on. Is it done? Yeah. Oh, wait, I need salt for this as well, don't I? Oh, damn it. Rust and salt. Where am I going to get salt? Damn it, okay, this puts a scuppers my whole plan. I was thinking about using all of that to make my chlorine chlorination rooms. Oh, we're in trouble. Hmm. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm... I'm I'm panicking over nothing. Panicking over nothing. It's fine. We can get salt. We can get salt. We just need to get a little bit of research first. Uh, this is going to be a hydro sensor. If that's above that, oh, if it's below 500 C or 500 kilos, that will allow water in. Now we've got a liquid pump. And then with a liquid pump, oh, they can slowly start getting covered in lots of germs. How many germs you got on you? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> They're going to end up with more as more and more germs get pumped in there. But we're not going to worry about that for now. They're going to use that to put research points in there, and then that research points is going to get us the desalinator. Once the desalinator is up and running, we have a bunch of salt water and brine lying about the place, and we can desalinate it, turn that into clean water, and give us salt, which we can then throw into the rusty oxidizer. All very simple and straightforward. <laughs> so, it's very straightforward. First, you pump out the clean water that you've been hiding in storage because it's absolutely riddled with germs. And it's going to cause all of your dupes to end up covered in massive amounts of germs. Then you use that to do the science. And then once you've got the science, that you get to the desalinator. Once you've got the desalinator, you can dump off your salt water here. Uh, that salt water gets desalinated. And once the salt water is desalinated, you get your salt. And once you get your salt, you put your salt into your rust oxidizer, which will also get you your oxygen and your chlorine. And then your chlorine you dump up into here, which you can then put into your little vacuum seal so that you can clean your food. Oh, very straightforward. Just, just standard oxygen not included stuff. While we're waiting for all of that water to get desalinated, it might take a little bit of time. I think I'll maybe harvest some more regolith. This is the only renewable, well, barring the water vent and the hydrogen vent, which we'll tap into later once we get some thermium, and I suppose the oil reservoir. It's one of the few renewable resources we have. So, yeah, I might want to harvest as much as I can while I've got the time. Ah, nice pristine space environment. Well, almost. Oh, is that meteors coming in burnt? No. Oh, and this is the entire map, by the way, just so you can see it. When you zoom out the whole way, this is what the whole thing looks like. Ah, nice little ant colony. Uh, I've just got my hands on another poke shell, so it's time to maybe stick in... Well, I have to transport it down here, which meant I had to delete everything that was in the way. And this is just one of those little things you have to do every so often. I mean, on a, on a bigger base where I'd have more space, I would probably make a way to do this more automated. But on a base this size, you're like, no, no, you've got to do all these little bits of manual jobs just to make sure everything gets done in time. Yeah. Are we all, do we almost have enough salt? Come on, seriously? 225, 252 kilos. Have we got rid of all of the salt water? No. No, we have not. God damn it. Okay, fine. This has not been emptied yet. I can't remember how full it has to get before you have to empty it, and I don't want to deconstruct it just yet. Also, I'm pretty sure we've got brine as well as salt water, so we should be good. I was just about to uh, put in all the brine when I realized, no, I might want that brine for later. 
Oh, and all my slicksters have died. Yeah, my slicksters keep dying down here, but we'll sort that out later. Um, I might want to keep the brine just because it gives us an extra layer of water that we can do some fun mechanics with. I think we'll just deconstruct this, and that should... Yep, salt pops out. Perfect. Uh, that means we can now stick it into our rusty oxidizer. Who, who wants to grab that errand? Come on. All right, here comes the client. Oh, yeah, now you, get out of there immediately. And that door needs to get locked. Perfect. Then we will activate the gas pump. Is that good? Oh. Just a different, try to make it out of a different material. Now, if we've done this right, yeah, the gas should appear in here. And then what the... Oh, wait, though. No. Gas overlay. Perfect, perfect. It will slowly but surely rip all the gas out of there. And we've got a filtration system set up here. Just the standard issue... Well, what has become my standard issue little gas element sensor. So any chlorine that gets picked up will get dumped up into our storage tank. Any non-chlorine will just get dumped out in the surrounding environment. So, with all of that done, after all of that, it is time to put in our little bit of food storage. That means we are going to put that there, little tiny gas vent there, and we only need one blob of this. You know what? Let's not hook that up just yet. We'll just put in one tiny blob, that's all we need. You don't need a lot. All right, ready to go. We'll hook you up and get ready to disconnect. That is plenty. <laughs> we just need the one. That is one blob of gas. How much is in there? Um, one kilo. One kilo of chlorine goes right in there. And if we've done that right, we now have a perfect pocket for decontaminating everything. Nice. All right. Uh, we need to finish off this. We're going to make this out of copper ore. It's the only thing we don't have a use for. We can get rid of the gas vent itself. We can also get rid of all of this. Let's start transferring all our food over here. Yeah, we can move all our cooking as well, though. It won't be perfect, but it should work. Now what we're going to do is set this conveyor loader here to allow manual use. And we're going to put it to sweep only and all the edibles. Then what we do here is we disable all of these, copy that setting across. And we just sweep all of these up. These should all get dumped into this conveyor loader, which should send them down here and into the little... Oh, I should probably put in a conveyor chute right there. Yep, that would make sense. And then once they're all in there, well, yeah, they should slowly lose all their germs. Well, once we finish that conveyor gold amalgam shoot. Come on, something on that. All right, there we go. Uh, now, do any of these have germs on the end? Well, pickled meal can't. That's one of the advantages as of pickled meal. It literally cannot end up with... Oh, perfect. It's got food poisoning. Pickled meal cannot get germs on it. It actually is anti-germs. That's the, the point of it, which turned out to be really useful. Normally, I wouldn't care, but in this playthrough, it's actually turned out to be quite handy. And if you look, the food poisoning germs on there are going up. Wow, that's... Oh, wait, no. Now they're plummeting. Ah, uh, yes. Surrounded by chlorine. So all the food poisoning germs on any of our food that ends up in here is just... Yep, they're all going to die. This should clean all our food and hopefully cut down on the enormous amount of food poisoning we've been getting. Which would be really great. Really, really great. Okay, now that all of that is done, uh, we've got food storage sorted so we shouldn't have to worry about things anymore. Our new food sources coming along they're running up to what seven eggs we need 20 of those in there so another 13 to go but they're 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 over there breeding there'll be more and more of them as time goes by uh down here ah oh, damn it how did you trap yourself already ig11 seriously i expected more from you what i want to do is get rid of the last of the germs in here some of the water has no germs in it, but some of it still does. And despite it going down rapidly, the moment we start pouring it out into a liquid tank like this, it has a tendency to multiply and do crazy stuff. So I'm just going to do a quick decontamination of this so that we don't have to worry about this again. All we're doing here is something very simple. We're going to vacuum out this entire area, and then we're just going to drop in one blob of chlorine and just make sure we kill off all the last of the germs. I'd like to be able to do science so that my dupe's spending all of eternity standing at the sink washing their hands. Oh, just one sink washing? That's that's great. Maybe the germs have gone down far enough that it's not a nightmare anymore. Lovely. Lovely, lovely. Oh, damn it. I made a mistake down here. I forgot to replace everything in here. One moment. I forgot to uh, put the auto sweeper back in and the little storage bin. That could have been awkward. Also, since I hadn't got the brick removed, they were, um, what do you call it? They were stunted because they were in a sm too, too confined a space. Anyway, how's this going over here? Right, perfect, perfect. Uh, we'll get rid of that. Once this place is vacuumed out, or... Actually, this place should be almost vacuumed out already. That's... Well, that's pretty quick. Once it's vacuumed out fully, we'll throw in just a little blob of chlorine. And then maybe cycle this water back through it until all the germs are gone. And then we should hopefully be able to just hammer at the last of the science. I had to pause science because the sheer amount of germs was causing problems. But we don't have that much left to go. We now have a complete vacuum in here, which is great. But it doesn't really kill the germs instantly. What we can do, though, is just put in one little blob of 
chlorine. But before we do that, let's sever the power to this. If you didn't have the, if you don't have the pliers mod, which you can download off the Steam website or the Steam Workshop, you could just uh, delete the high pressure gas vent. It has the same effect, but I'm just going to leave that in just in case we need it. We'll connect that up there. Oh, come on, seriously? How is that going to take that long to connect up? Come on, people. All right, they've just finished it. Oop, there goes a blob. We'll cut that off. That should be... Wow, that's that's 328 grams of chlorine. I have no idea how it's that small. And another blob right behind it. You know what? Just as, as a sort of a sample, we are going to split this up. So we only put in 318 grams of chlorine. And boom. It's like Armageddon for germs. They just can't handle it. I have to put in the germs here. Once they're in chlorine, no matter how much or how little, it just insta start it basically annihilates them. Uh, the air, of course, a bunch of germs in here, so let's maybe cycle that back through really quick and finally be done with all our germ problems. After a little bit of cycling around, we have managed to clear out all of the germs. Finally, it only took God knows how many cycles. Finally, we can start doing research again without fear of massive, massive contamination problems. <laughs> it's really weird having gone this long. You know what? We'll just queue up all of those. I just want to knock out all the last of the research because we're going to need all of it for rockets as well. Uh, and at the same time, we can hook this power back up. Reason being, we have connected that back up to our uh, chlorine tank and now we can recycle all that chlorine for later use. And oh no, 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 no. That was a mistake. And we'll cut you off there. That's much better. How much chlorine did we lose? 75.2 grams. You know what? I'm not going to cry over a little bit of spilled chlorine. It's fine. It'll float down to the bottom of our base. I can collect it at a later date. We already have 16 kilos of this stuff, which is going to be perfect for decontaminating this. Oh, wow. I am miles behind on the time. A um, uh, couple of quick things to cover, though, before uh, we cut this one out. I did a few changes down here. This igneous rock has well, has a lot of heat potential in it. It's uh, it's just to do with the, the metals that were in here before were not quite as... Mm, they didn't have as much specific heat capacity. This has a specific heat capacity of one. The best metals are... Even, the, like the wolframite has a specific heat capacity of 0 0.1. So almost a tenth. Uh, yep, yeah, diamond had half the capacity, tungsten 0.13, steel about half the capacity as well. So what I've done is I've reduced the temperatures just a bit so we can drain just that little bit more heat out of the igneous rock. So that when it get, does get spit out of here, it's not, you know, too hot. Like it, it gets dumped into the metal and it starts off at 100 and something, but as it slowly passes through, we only manage to drain it down to about 130, which is okay, I suppose. I can live with that. We're draining out most of the energy. And if you'll notice, we still have so much magma down here. Uh, also, the gas reservoir is backed up with hydrogen, which is a good sign that we're we're doing really well on the power front, because the hydrogen is used primarily after if the, if there's not enough power on the grid, which is usually provided by our two steam turbines over here, then the hydrogen is used. Then after hydrogen comes the natural gas, and the natural gas is still at how many kilos? 134 kilos. Yeah, we per tile, so we have plenty of that stuff left over. Power wise, we're sorted. Germ wise, we're now sorted. And normally, germs would not be an issue. It's just the abyssalite bug here caused us a few minor issues in this game. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed our, our run on Baby Base so far, and uh, good luck. <laughs> <laughs>